Hello friends, welcome to part 4 of shopping cart using Blazor server. So in our previous video, we have seen this admin panel creation and once we log in, uh, we have created this category page, entire the current operations of this category page where we have successfully created all these categories and uh, the edit and delete all these CRUD operations we have done. Now the next target will be to create the products page. So, so open the products page. In the products page we have simply added the session creation. Now here on the similar lines we have to create the structure. So before getting the products, we have to get the categories because based on the category, we have to add a new product. So here we'll create a new category list. And this category list will be of category model. So if we go in data models, we have already used this category model. So we'll have to use the proper namespace. So if we go on category page here we have used this admin service custom model so these three links we have to copy and put it here so now we have a category list now we just have to call this method to get the category in our category page we have created this get categories oh, so here also we'll have to create a similar method and get the categories so whatever categories we are getting on the same page that we are assigning it to the category list so this categories we have to load on the page load itself so we have to call the method get categories inside our initialized method so we can copy the this method and simply put it here and here we just have to call get categories so we have got the categories and we have assigned it to our list now on the same line we created this category model so we have to create a product model now so we'll have add a new class add new class and we'll name it as product model let's make it public inside this product model we'll create all these properties and we'll have to inherit the data annotations for this so using this component model dot data annotations this namespace we are using now we have used here the name price of the product stock which is currently available category id category name the image of the product the file name which you're going to upload the file content which is a byte array and a flag cart flag okay so this flag we are going to use in our user side customer facing ui where like this flag will decide whether the particular product is added to the cart or not okay so here we have added the respective messages against each of the properties Now in our here we have to create few properties. So here we have created this many properties inside our products dot razor page. So here we have product model, product list, category ID, then a browser browser file object, then image URL products to update products to delete show edit pop up show delete and all these all these flags similar flags we have used in our previous component as well okay so here once this is done we have to create the form so we'll delete this tag so here we'll be adding this product model is there this product model will be using for our form binding so here we have to add if the product model is null then we have to show the loading sign else we have to simply 
bind the object and show the edit form where user can upload a product and here we have to create the div and use the bootstrap card inside this div to use card body and one more for class card body and here we will be giving the heading card header product so one card body is to add the product another one is to display the list of products so this will be a grid view so, so inside the first we are going to create the entire edit form structure so here I have pasted the entire structure so here inside this card body we have the similar structure as we have used in our previous category form so here we have products model dot name and the validation then the input number for price and the validation and the respective form group and form control we have added then here the new thing which we are doing is we are adding a drop down list so for that we have used the category list which we have just created and inside that we have a drop down control so few events we have to introduce one is the save product another one will be the category clicked and uh, here when you, this 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 form is for the image of the product and uh, whatever image is selected we are simply binding it in the image url and showing it again here and then we have two buttons one is to save the product and another one to clear the entire form so here if we see we have to clear this clear form on input file change category clicked and save product so here we have three form rows and one text so we will create this save product so here we'll simply create an empty method save product timing will make it as void for this we'll have to create one clear form method so in clear form simply we are creating a new model and the images URL, whatever the images user has selected, we are resetting that entire structure. After that, if we see, we have got this one category clicked for the drop down list. So, category clicked method will be creating here. It's a very simple method. The input will be the change event arguments and from the category event we'll get the value whatever selected category is there and we'll simply assign it to our local variable which we have created here okay so from the drop down change event we'll get the category of the product and after this we'll have to add a method to select the images so let's paste it here so here i have on input file change so whenever the user selects the image for the particular product this event will get triggered and from this event what how many images are selected all these images will get assigned to this selected files array this selected files array is a list of uh, read only list of browser files so whatever we are selecting it's getting populated in here and then from the file name we are assigning it here and from all the selected files whatever are selected we are simply requesting the file of this type and resizing them and creating a buffer array byte array and using the open read stream we are converting into an image data and assigning it to the images url and the name of the image we are assigning as the image data so this is a simply whatever user is uploading that we are selecting it here assigning it here so this is also working fine now now all the errors are gone so simply let's see let's run it once 
and here on this initialized we have to create our new product so that so let's run it So here you can see whenever we load this page for for some time the admin screen is visible and then it disappears so that also will fix in this one so we log in now in the products we can see this entire form so i have the name price stock and i can see the drop down list also being bind here here you can see the we are getting some error input string okay so we have not added okay so we'll have to add one check here because if we see it's a blank and blank cannot be converted to a string so for that case if category not Spring dot is null or empty, and then only we can put this code inside it. So let's convert it to string first. Okay, this should work fine now. Now in our index dot razor page what we see like whenever this initially what happens this is the landing page so it will go here and it shows this one welcome to add our new app so instead of here hello admin welcome to admin panel so here we have to add one flag bool is admin logged in equal to false so if the session is session is present then we have to set it true and here we have to add add the rate if is admin logged in equal to, equal to true then we have to show this message if admin is authenticated then we can show the panel else we don't have to show so here we have to simply create this admin key and in this session we have to inherit few namespace so here we'll add it as span and put this inside this one now session storage and navigation manage we have to import so that we can import from the login screen we have navigation manager and put it here then we have the session storage that also we can put it here now every time it will check for this session and if the session is not present then it won't show this one earlier whenever we used to run it will show hello admin for a blink of second and then it will disappear so now that problem is solved coming back to our products page we have simply have created this entire structure the form and all now we have to save the data in our database and get the products again so we'll create similar to get categories we need get products so we'll simply create this get products and here also we'll Get products and let's go to the categories get go to the implementation here for we'll copy the get categories and paste it here and change it to get products instead of category model let's make it product model and this will change it to get products and this one also to get product model 
and let's add it in the interface. Get products. Now here, get products will make it this one. Now we have a method to get the products and the get the categories. Now whatever get products we have to assign it to product list. Okay. Now this product list we have to simply put it below the edit form as a grid view. So here I have created this entire table structure and if the product list is null then we are showing the loading sign for the product and inside that I have created a table with few table headers inside this TR then the which is serial number, name, price, stock, category and a delete button. We are not interested in the edit one as for, for now and same in the for each loop we are looping through the product list and then showing the product name, price, stock, category name and we have a delete button here on the delete button we are showing the alert message and then allowing that product to be deleted let's create a method for this delete button click so here next save we'll have this delete button click and here we are passing the product to delete and assigning it to product so as we have seen our category page we'll create one toggle delete pop-up method so it's a simple method which is using this flag and if it is true then making it false and vice versa so this we have created now if we see all the errors are gone it's a very simple tabular structure so we have the edit form and this one now let's create one two divs for showing the delete pop-up so here we see we have these flags delete pop-up success pop-up editing we are not doing it in this module so let's create the two delete and success okay so here we have if the delete pop-up flag is true then we'll be showing this model pop-up if the success pop-up is true then we'll be showing this model pop-up so simple same structure as we have covered in our category one so once the user confirms the delete we have the toggle delete pop-up then we have to create this delete product and if the user on success we have to simply create this toggle success pop-up so these two methods will be creating here next to toggle delete toggle success pop-up then once user confirms the delete button we have to delete the product so here similar similar to what we have done in our category we have created this delete product and we are calling the delete product so in our admin service admin panel service we have to create this delete product if the successful deletion we have to dis, uh, disable the delete pop-up and after that we have to show this message and on success pop-up we have to again toggle it and we have to reset the model and then get the again products again so that we get a refresh list of product similar to what we have done in category now we have to create this delete one so here let's go here go to implementation so what we have for delete category similar we'll have for product model product to delete and it's a simple boolean so we have this one and in this razor page we have delete product so we'll add it in our interface that's it so this delete product is also done delete product
okay now this should work fine so we have this delete product all this is done now we simply have to create a method to save the product so we have the success pop-up ready we have the delete pop-up ready the entire form is ready now we have to create the method still our a logic layer through the api so that we can save that actual product so is here inside the save product we have to simply create a stream and get all the selected files and then create a memory stream copy all this stream inside the memory stream and close the stream and using that memory stream we are assigning it to the file content so if you remember in our product model we have created the category id for all these fields so we are for this category this is the file name and content name rest all fields like the product name stock they are they that we have got from the edit form so here we have to inherit few namespace this io okay now we have to create a method in our admin panel service to save the products so we'll create it here so here we have created one simple method to simply post the entire object to our api and here simply it's a post api slash admin and the new product this entire product model which contains all the information about the product that we are posting it to our api let's put it in our here now from the so it's working fine now let's build it once okay so we are done with our products component now in our api we have to add all the respective calls so let's open the controller admin controller and here we'll be adding all the respective calls so here in this admin controller we'll be creating three methods save get and delete for a category so here simply we are using this get product and calling the admin service from the logic layer in the save product it's a post method we are receiving the new product and then from the admin service we are getting the new product id and based on the new product id we are simply saving all the images whatever product images we are getting in our images folder so here in this api we have to create one images folder add a new folder images so this next product id the whatever images we are getting that image will be saving as for example the product id is one then one dot png and then simply saving the rest of the information so whatever memory stream information we are receiving in this product new product that we are simply copying it in our uh, file stream and uh, on that path whatever path we have mentioned in this environment web route on that path it is getting copied so here simply first then the next uh, delete one in this delete one we are simply passing the product to our next layer which is the service layer so let's create this get products method so in our logic layer we have the admin service and similar to get categories we'll have to create get products
Mm, let's change it to product list and let's make it to get products and this one is set so let's put it in in the interface So in the admin controller, we can see this get products is done. The next one we have is let's focus on the delete product. So here simply will it's okay. So here if you see uh, in the product model we have created, but for the products table we have we don't have any table, so we'll have to create the table product table and update our schema so let's create the products table new query so here we are creating this entire script for the product table Let's create it and now we have to update our schema. Let's comment off, comment it off. No, let it be. So it is failing so we'll have to comment off it off because it is not building and that will controller as well let's build the project and let's run now okay so it has created the product uh, schema let's comment off now we can uncomment now let's create the delete Okay, so now here yeah, simply we are getting the product based on the product ID and simply using the DB context, removing it and then saving the changes. If everything is fine, then we are setting the flag as true. <coughs> In this product, also we have to do some modifications because here yeah, we are simply using this ID and name, we have to get the entire structure. So we'll modify this entire method. So here <coughs> from the code we are getting all the categories and all the products. Then from all the products we are simply looping through them and then setting creating a list of product model, then assigning all the respective properties. So here ID, name, price, stock, image, URL, category ID and along with that we are getting the name of the category as from this category data so we are preparing this object and returning it now let's focus on the save so here we simply have to save the product the save method is nothing but whatever new product we are getting assigning it to the from the product model we are assigning it to the product and then adding it to the db context and saving it and we are returning the new product back we are returning it back just to show it on the ui so this is and here we have added a new method get new product id this is nothing but just to get the next product 
the primary key of the next product. So let's add all these methods in our interface. So here in this controller it's working fine. Here we have this save product, then we have this get products. Let's build it once. Build succeed. Now in our admin panel on this products page we have all the required code from this category we have to simply copy the style same style for pop-up we are again copying it here it's a repeat style but as of now we'll copy it and use the same one at the end of the video we'll create a single style sheet and import it here for timing let it be like this Let's run it. So here we have the categories, we have the products and the entire grid view. So let's create a product in men's category price 2 and 0 so available stock 10 let's select the photos so we have this men's category is blue jack blue shirt let's make it as blue denim shirt and click on save before clicking on save let's put a breakpoint the api click on save so the api has been called and we can see the category ID then the byte the content the image the men file name all the all the stock and everything let's so we got an error could not find part of path D images let's stop it so here we are using this web root path and assigning it in the images folder so if we go in this api we have created it here okay so i think we'll have to create one web root folder so we'll copy this one ww root and paste it inside this and from this we'll delete off this one and delete this one as well and this images folder will move it inside this web root okay so that will give us this web root path and on that path it will search for the images folder let's run it again
blue shirt open save let's go to f10 f10 okay so this time it has properly saved it let's go and do f11 here it is saving the product continue here we can see the record has been added successfully let's check in the products table so here we have the image path and everything everything is fine here so this way we have added the product successfully let's add one more current st this stock is nothing but a current stock let's add a blue jacket save it okay so let's delete it so here it will simply delete it and show the pop-up the functionality wise it's exactly the same replica of what we have in category but here we are using this drop down list and a image upload functionality so that was it for this video tutorial in next video we'll see how we can update the stock of a product so for example if here we are having a stock as a 10 so if user wants to add a new stock of the same category and upgrade it to 10 from 10 to 20 or in that case what we have to do so for that we'll be working on the stock page so thanks for watching see you in the next video